up guys? Uh, I'm Octavio Garcia. I am Rodrigo Guerrero. Today we're going to be doing a number 30 gold crown prep uh, and we're going to be doing it bench top so you guys get a better idea of what we're doing. Uh, so we're going to run through some of the rules that you guys are going to have to follow for your uh, PA. Uh, the first uh, step is that we're going to have to do a breakthrough uh, through the interproximal. So we're going to try to get through that. We want to use a flame burr or a 169L for that. And then the second step uh, is going to be the occlusal reduction. We'll want to reduce that and then follow that by the axial reduction. We're going to go around it and then we're going to do the finish line and then we're going to refine the, pe the prep. The prep. The prep, yes. We're going to be wanting to refine the prep. And then uh, we're going to go through each of these uh, in more detail as we do this video. All right, guys, before getting started, to measure the occlusal reduction that Octavia was saying for us, that one to 1.5 millimeter reduction, we're gonna wanna have a uh, putty matrix. So essentially you're gonna wanna get uh, about a full uh, scoop of this. And then most professors, faculty will tell you to just do one line, but I personally like to do a second one. And that's because it'll help it set a lot faster. I might be wasting product. Sorry, don't get mad at me. Um, anyways, you want to make sure that you're using gloves. You don't want to be touching this with your hands. It'll get, you know, really oily and, and just, it's not cool. Not the way you want to start your prep. Um, squeeze it around. You want to get the right color. It's going to be like a darker blue color. And you want to make sure it's, you know, really uniform. So once you have that, you can grab a little piece of it and press it down. You wanna make sure you're pressing it down onto your tooth pretty well. That way you're capturing that occlusal anatomy nicely. And then um, you're gonna come over with the rest of it. And one tip that I usually tell most students is to make sure that it goes down to the depth of the vestibule. Really try to capture that anatomy there because once you go and cut it, it's going to allow you to seat it and you know that way, and that way you know that it's always seating the same way every time, and you're not going to be measuring the wrong uh, reduction. So, anyways, from here on out, you're just going to wait a couple minutes for it to set. You can just kind of pat it down, shape it, make it look a little nicer, and you'll be ready to go. Okay, guys, it's been about two, three minutes. It's now fully set. I can feel that it's hard, so that way you can just come in, remove it. You want to look at the occlusal, make sure that it's it's nice and defined. And then the next thing we're going to do before starting with the crown prep is to get a 25 blade and let's make a cut right down the middle of it. All right, so now you, now we have it split right down the middle and we'll be able to really seat it in there. So we seat it in there. Right there you can see that there's no reduction, but this is essentially what's going to help us see how much we've reduced. So now we can go ahead and get started. Okay guys, this is the first step. So once again, the first step is interproximal breakthrough. For this, I'm gonna be using the flame burr. You can also use the 169, I, the 169L. I'm a, I, I prefer, personally prefer the, the flame, so. Here we go. Okay guys, so as you can see, here I've done already my interproximal breakthrough. But I have left a little enamel shell that I'm going to go in with an instrument and just flick off like just like that, right? So now I know for a fact that the interproximal or the adjacent side of my adjacent tooth is intact. I have definitely not nicked it. And, and then now I can move on to the other side. So that is one big tip that I have for you guys to leave that little shell to protect the adjacent tooth. Okay guys, so as you can see, full length of the burr, why? Because the burr is exactly one millimeter in uh, in width, so that way I know that I at least have one millimeter reduction there. And then, you know, if I keep, I'm gonna smooth the rest of these cusps out to keep my, my occlusal anatomy, and that way I'll also ensure that I have at least one millimeter reduction. Next, I'm gonna move on to the lingual depth grooves, or depth cuts. So once I have my buck, my buckle and lingual depth cuts, I'm gonna go ahead and smooth them out. Class 
classy. So at this point we already have the lingual and buckle reduction. So now I'm going to move on to that functional cusp bevel. Reminder that on mandibular teeth you want that functional cusp bevel on the buckle side. That is the side that's occluding with the maxillary teeth and then on the maxillary teeth it's going to be on the lingual. So same as, same as uh, we did here, we're going to also do some depth grooves. And then we're gonna smooth them out. Okay, so at this point, whenever we look at it from the occlusal, we see how now the lingual, the buckle, and then also this functional actual buckle side, I guess, the functional cusp bevel is reduced. One more quick thing I will say is that I'm gonna go back in super quick and smooth out these sharp areas right along here to make sure that there's no sharp areas on this crown prep. And then once again, we're gonna come back at the very end to refine everything. So now you should be able to feel it and it should feel smooth. Okay, so moving on to the next portion of it, in my opinion, this is probably the hardest part, um, which is the axial reduction. So after having drilled all of this, we actually have lost that 0.5 millimeter uh, line that I had done to prevent it from hitting the gingiva. So I'm gonna redraw that. And essentially, my best tip that I have for the axial reduction would be to make also depth grooves on there. Um, we want to make sure that we're really staying along the path of insertion of the mandibular teeth. So mandibular teeth have a slight lingual inclination. As you can see, I hope you guys can see from this angle. They have a slight lingual inclination, so I really recommend you guys to grab your burr before going in, and you're going to just place it right here, see that lingual inclination, place it on the adjacent tooth, return to that one, and then you can really move on to that axial um, area. So here we go. Once again, once you have those depth grooves, depth cuts, then you can just connect them. But it's gonna be super important that as you're connecting them, you're focusing on maintaining that finish line. Remember, we want it to be 0.5 millimeter chamfer. So at this point, I have connected all of them. I can look at it from the occlusal to see that I, have a, I do in fact have a finish line. Hope you guys can see from there. And at this point, it's not the smoothest, but that's okay, we're gonna come back. Remember, that's a, a later step of the prep to actually go in and refine it. Right now we want to be as fast as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the lingual side and we're gonna do the same thing. Those depth grooves, connect them, and then afterwards we're gonna move into the interproximals. Once we have all that, then we can go into the final step of the prep, which is gonna be to refine everything. Okay guys, so this next portion will be the inner proximal finish line. Here, it's a little tricky because you can easily nick the adjacent two, so you want to really be able to measure to see whether the one DT is gonna be enough to pass, and if not, there's nothing wrong with getting the half DT and using that one. For now, I'm gonna try to stay, uh, keep using the, the one DT and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so now we've done essentially the gross reduction of this tooth. Um, now it comes to refining the prep. So this is where self-assessment is gonna be really important and you being able to analyze your own preps to determine what could be improved. So for example, I know that my line angles need to be really well rounded. And I know that historically that's one thing that I usually used to struggle on. Here on this specific line angle, I can see that it's a little bit bumpy. There might be a little bit of an undercut here. So I'm gonna make sure to go in and refine that. All my axial walls need to be smoothed out a little bit more. And then of course, we're gonna be checking our uh, occlusal reduction with our matrix to make sure that we're at the appropriate depths. So to do this 
refinement, I'm gonna switch my burr from the 1DT to the 1DTF. Okay guys, so this part's really important. So now we have the matrix back on so we can really see how our uh, cruzal reduction is um, and really just self-assess. So right here, it's about, you know, one, eh, you, someone could argue maybe 0.9, but one millimeter for sake of the video. Right there's definitely a one millimeter. Right here, right at the central groove, I see kind of drops to like 0.8-ish. So I'm gonna go back in and reduce a little more at the central groove. And overall, I can go in and reduce really everywhere because it's supposed to be from one to 1 1.5 millimeters. Um, and then right there, also a little bit under reduced, uh, maybe 1.9 there. And then these uh, cusp tips are a little bit sharp, so I'm still gonna go in and reduce those a little bit more. So good thing is that we have room to work with. We're not over reduced, so now we can just go in and refine that. Classy. Classy. Okay guys, so now I have gone in and refined it as I should and we're gonna remeasure everything and sure enough now we're definitely at point or sorry one millimeter to maybe like 1.1 and it's pretty uniform too you see how we stay around the same distance length all the way around maybe a little bit more could be reduced right there but overall we're about 1.1 millimeter uniformly throughout the prep um, i can take this off and we can see how the most of the occlusal anatomy is maintained you should be able to look at it from above and really see that full finish line um, i will say as i'm self-assessing interproximal wise i see that it's maybe a little more than 0.5 millimeters uh, maybe that's something that i could have used a 1dt sorry the half dt but you know it's all about self-assessing yourself definitely on the buckle and on the lingual i'm really happy with how that chamfer came out definitely around 0.5 millimeters and overall the convergence seems to be pretty good as we can see from the from the side hopefully you can see from this view here um it's all about the right convergence you know it's not going too far out or too far lingually too far buckly or too far lingually so anyways that's it all right guys that's our video i hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully it was informative just, uh, you know, the first basic building block in your way to becoming a dentist. Um, if you have any questions, just ask uh, other... Uh... <laughs> just ask someone else because we can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully, you know, uh, this will help you out on your uh, PA. And, uh, you know, good luck with the rest of your year and the rest of your training. Take Peace care. Peace out.